Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to another lesson. Uh, this one's going to be more on how to learn chords um, that aren't your basic kind of stock. Uh, open position chords. And we're going to look on things that are a little bit more extended. And the reason I'm bringing this up, because this is a question I'm getting a lot from a lot of my students right now, is how to memorize these chords and um, you know, learn how to move them in, in between keys and everything else. And so I'm going to share one of my favorite chord books. It's the Joe Pass chord books. It looks like, or, uh, sorry, uh, guitar chords book. It looks like that. Um, and if you've ever watched any of Joe Pass's uh, videos, he talks about you know the books that have a thousand and one chords in them. Or, whatever but a lot of them don't sound that good or they're hard to make sound good um, either that or they're pretty hard to play um, you know as far as big stretches and when you're kind of in the heat of the moment you know trying to come up with a chord it's, it's something that's not the easiest to just uh, reach so um, what I figured I'd do is just kind of look at maybe the first chord in here so he starts off with major chord forms. And what he does is he gives you the notes that are in the chord. And it's kind of up to you to figure out exactly what, you know, what that chord is um, as far as the name and everything. So the first chord he has is, looks like this. So all the chords in the for the major section of those books, they're all in the key of C. And so this one's fairly easy to visualize because we have C as our root note. So it's something that we're kind of used to doing from this. We have C, then we have an E, and an E, and a D. So if we went back and analyzed that, what we have is C is our root, E is the third, B is our major seventh, and then D is our ninth. So what we have here is a C major nine chord. So now what do we do with this information? Okay, well now we know we have a C major nine. Well, what I like to do is I run it around the cycle. That way I kind of know where it looks like in uh, all 12 keys. And so, uh, you know, the cycle goes like this. I go from C. And what we're going to do, is, since we know there's our root note, what we need to do is find a root note again on the fifth string. So we're going to go to an F, so we need to find F. And we're going to play the same chord voicing. And we played an F. We'll go to B flat again. We need to find B flat on the fifth string. I, I'm just keeping the same shape. Just um, I do that for myself, just for visual reasons. Then we're going to go to E flat. Then A flat, then D flat, then G flat, then B, then E, then A, then D, then G, and then we are back at C. So we've learned how to play a C major 9 going through the cycle. Now we kind of know what it feels like to play it in all 12 keys. So that's where I'll stop with, with this part of the exercise, and I'll move it to something else. So say I'm working on a, a, a song, and it's uh, I'm going to choose Afternoon in Paris, because uh, there's some, we have some relaxation in, in it um, is for what we're going to do. So the way that I that I start applying these chord voicings is I'll, you know, again, apply it to a song. But I won't worry about the chords that aren't a major chord. And in this case, I'm going to make all of the major chords this chord shape. They're all going to be major nine chords. And so again, the reason I use afternoon in Paris is because we have a major chord, and we have a um, we have some other chords. Then we have another major chord. So we have a little bit of time to think about where we need to go to next. So right now, what I'm using is the I real B. I'm just going to run. I'm going to run through the entire song, but just playing the major chords. I'll show you kind of how that will sound. So it starts off the C major chord, making a C major nine. Rest, next chord to B flat. 
Got rest, A flat, rest, you got a C. Resting again, back to C. Rest, going to B flat, resting, A flat, resting, end up on C, play C again. Resting, we're waiting for the major chord to show back up. Here it is. Resting. Waiting for another major chord. Here it goes, so C major. Resting, B flat. We're waiting, A flat. C major. And so that's how I'll start applying it. So now I'm learning how to use that particular chord. And then from there, if I know other chord voicings, then I'll throw those in there and then I'm working that new chord into my playing. And eventually, it, and it takes time. Sometimes it takes, you know, maybe three months for something to spontaneously start happening in your um, when you're coughing for somebody is saying oh yeah I can use this but it, it but it will happen some will be easier um, especially if you really like the chord the more you like the chord the more you'll want to use it and put it in your playing to where you'll use it too much at first and then over time you'll start working and using it tastefully um, so the next thing I'll do uh, with the chord once I've got it kind of where I learned it is I'll try to use it on different areas of the neck. So this one's primarily on strings 5, 4, 3, and 2. Well, I can use it on, on another string group. I just have to, you know, kind of refinger it. So what we had was C, E, B, and D. So this is what it would look like here. And again, I'd do the cycle and then I might run it to a song. And then we would want to do it on our higher string groups too. Um, so it would look like this. That's kind of an awkward stretch for me. Uh, I would still practice it just in case I would ever need it for some reason. If I was doing like a chord melody piece and had a D in the melody, I would have something I could use it for. But I probably would, for, for me personally, someone out there may really like that and they can choose to practice it. But, but for me personally, I, I don't really particularly like that stretch. So that would probably be something where I would stop my practice there, just getting it under my fingers and stopping there. But that, that's the best way for me. I'm not saying this is the best way to learn chords, but for me this was how I really started upping my um, comping game was, you know, I'd learn a new voicing, and maybe one week I'd do a major, the next week I'd learn a new minor voicing, and then I'd learn a dominant seven voicing the week after that. And I'd just keep adding on um, <clears throat> until I, you know, Feel like I was pretty confident and knew that chord, um, but again, that like I said, that that's what helped me the most in this kind of system of slowly adding it into my playing. Um, that's what worked for me, you know. Um, that's all I got. So hopefully this helps some people out there. And uh, if you have any questions, I guess you can leave some comments. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks.